Hi everyone, it's Kelly Van Washenova here from Denison's Educational Technology Services. In this week's EdTech tip, we're going to take a look at Poll Everywhere, which is a polling option that you can use with your classes. So it is the week before Halloween and also the week before the 2020 presidential election. So I'm incorporating this as part of a longer post where I talk about different digital tools that can help you promote civil discourse in your classes. So do check out the link below to see what those other tools are as well. All right, let's get started with Poll Everywhere. Okay, everyone. So the first thing you're going to do when you start to make your poll is go to polleverywhere.com and this is where you will end up. Now, I'm already logged in, but if you're not logged in, you will see there that you have a login option and you can also, there's a sign up option. So you'll want to sign up and set up your account first. But once you have an account created and you come to polleverywhere.com, you can click on your activities. Now, activities are what Poll Everywhere calls your questions slash prompts or however you're referring to them. They're the things that you are putting in front of people to collect responses on. So they refer to those as activities. And you can actually group your activities together in groups. So before I even do that, um, I want to point out that for the free one, you are limited to 25 responses per activity. So just keep that in mind. Um, you know, if, if you're with a larger class, this might not be a great option for you. The first thing I'll do here is I'll create a new group. And we'll call this one Civil Discourse. So that's my discussion topic. Um, so I've created that. And the group in and of itself doesn't really do anything. It's just like a holding place for you to put your activities in. So I promised a word cloud. So let's go ahead and click on the three dots there. And we're going to add an activity to this civil discourse group. Now let's choose, these are the different types of activities. And since I said word cloud, we're going to actually choose a word cloud here. And in this title box, you can put your prompt, your question, or whatever you'd like to call it. So I'm going to type something in there. Okay, so I've got my title there. You can also use an image. You see the little image, upload an image option. So I'm going to click create. And once you click create, you come to the configuration area. So this is where you're going to set up how you want your activity to work. Keep in mind that I have made one activity so far, and if I wanted to create a second, I could just go back to my grouping, and I could create a whole bunch of activities and then go through the configuration of them all at the same time, or I can just, you know, create one activity at a time. It, it depends on how I want to do that for this group. So here you can see uh, there's nothing to display yet. This is what I would display once the word cloud is being created. But first, we're doing the configure. And if I drop down how people can respond, it shows me the options for web or text. I would leave texting on, like the ability to respond with a text message. It might be easier than typing in the website. Also, if you're in class and using this while students are physically in the room, it might be easier for them to respond with a text message on their phone if they choose. So those are options there. This website link is what I would copy, so I'm going to right click and choose copy link address. That's the link I'm giving my students to take this poll. Next down here you can also see this audience restriction and identity. So right now I have it to where it will show screen name and that is a default with the poll everywhere options here. So um, it's going to ask them for their name and you can have responses associated with the names. If you don't want that and you want it to be completely anonymous, you can choose that option, but it is going to give you this warning message. So something to keep in mind with making it completely anonymous is that your students will be able to post anything and you won't even see who did that. Your response settings are the next area you can limit how many times each person can respond, or you can make it as many as they'd like. 
you can also choose whether you're going to allow them to change answers or not. And those are the settings for the free account. If you have a paid account, you get a little bit more, but these are the main configuration questions. So once you have your question set up, and remember we copied the link up here, copied link address, you can go ahead and choose activate to turn on your activity to activate it. And once that is active, people are able to respond. So let me collect some responses. So I collected some responses so I could have an example to display on the screen. Now, since you're the creator of this poll, you get to sit here and watch as the answers all flow in. Uh, the people taking the poll, they just see the question prompt. So we can see what they see if you want to test it out by clicking this test area. So this is how they see it right there. Okay, so once you have your responses and you're ready to go ahead and display this for the class, so locking is going to leave this on the screen and it's still active. So people can still respond, but it's going to lock the current situation on my screen. So it's essentially pausing. If you want to turn it off so people cannot respond anymore, you would click activate again. And now that's gray, so it's not active anymore. And don't need to lock it, but I can, so I can turn that off and go into full screen here. And this is how you can display. So if you're in Zoom or Meet, make sure you use present or screen share to do that. When I'm done on full screen, I hit that escape button and I come back to here. We did the configure, I showed you the test, but this present area over here, if you take a look at how to present, it does tell you what you can do, which is how I just did the full screen. But the other option would be to share the actual response link or do some other information with live results. So take a look at how you want to do that. You could just take this link here, this response link, copy that and, and paste it into Notebull or your Zoom, wherever, and have students see the responses right there. Or you can just show them on your screen. Or when you're done, you can do a screenshot of the word cloud and save that image and go ahead and post it for them. So those are some different options. Now you'll see I, I still have activate, so it's active right now, it's, it's taking responses. And when I'm done and I click back on my activities here, you can see that it is still active, meaning it's still collecting responses because it's highlighted in green here. When you're done, you'll just wanna make sure you click that to deactivate it so it's not still collecting responses. Now, if you wanted, you could also add more activities to this group. Remember, activities are the prompts, they're the questions, they're the things you're pulling on. So if you click the dots there and you choose add activity, and I'm just going to do a quick one here. And those who know me, you know that my standard go-to is the cat or dog question. Uh, you can also add an option here if you want to add more multiple choice options. Okay. And then I can click create there. And I've created another activity. This is a multiple choice, so it looks a little bit different than that word cloud. But once you activate it, and you go to the test area, you can see what it looks like and how the students will be able to respond to that. You also still have that configuration with all the different configuration options, the same as the last activity. What's different now that I have more than one activity in the same group, I can now toggle between next and previous, right? Because now multiple questions, same grouping. And each question slash activity has its own settings. So you could turn one off. So now that's not active anymore. And I can go to the next one. I could activate the next one. And each of those activity settings are individual for that particular activity. And anytime you're in this screen, you just click the activities at the top to get back to your main activities page. 
Now, there are a lot of other features and things you can do with the free account and poll everywhere, but I'm, I'm not going to go into those today with this short EdTech tip, but I will provide a link to some more tutorials and more information about poll everywhere, and I'll do that as part of the resources in the link below. Happy Halloween from the Spooky Pumpkin. I hope your upcoming week is not too frightening for you. Thanks for watching.